Hello and welcome. You're watching To The Point. Yesterday, French President Francois Hollande's visit to India ended. Today, we ask how did it go off, what did it achieve, and where do the relations between the two countries stand to this evening? Those are the questions I'm going to put today to France's ambassador to India, Francois Richier. Ambassador Richier, before we come to the serious stuff, mm -hmm. let's start with the fun bits. What did President Hollande make of the Republic Day Parade? Well, that was, of course, for him the first time, but the fifth French leader to attend. And I think that was full of uh, interesting lessons for us. Uh, first, first of all, uh, the presence of the French contingent, and uh, which was the first as well, and the sentiment that it does not exactly look like the one we have on Bastille Day, so we have probably some lessons to learn. And of course he was enthusiastic uh, when he saw the different contingents, the camels, and the, the girls who were dancing at the end. That was really a great enjoyment for him. In fact, at a private lunch yesterday, the president said that he was fascinated by the tableaus and he thought that this might be a good idea to introduce into the Bastille Day Parade in France. Is that likely to happen? Um, I know that he has got this idea. Uh, will this happen? I don't know. And what about... But certainly something is going to change. And that change will be as a result of what he saw yes. yesterday in Delhi. What about the fact that this time around, for the first time ever, French troops marched alongside Indian soldiers in the Republic Day Parade? Where did that idea come from? And am I right in saying that it all happened within the last... 15, 20 days. That is right. Early January, uh, I was called in the MEA and uh, people has, uh, told me there is this ID coming and could you, could you do it? So we started to look into the matter and realized that there was a French battalion coming to India uh, to have exercise with the Indian Army in Rajasthan and we thought that would be exact, exactly the right uh, battalion to bring to Republic Day Parade because they have trained uh, with the Indian Army a few days before. So the idea originated with the Ministry of External Affairs? Well, Indian side altogether. And was it just a coincidence that the French soldiers are actually part of a regiment that in 1780 fought in India? Uh, it is a coincidence because we discovered that after picking that particular regiment when we were digging into its history and discovered that from 1780 to 1784 they fought against the East, in East India Company uh, alongside uh, uh, Mysore's troops. Now, the president also met some leading Indian celebrities, some of modern India's most powerful, best-known women. He met Ashwarya Rai for lunch, he met Bharti Kher, he also met people like Ritu Berry. What did he make of the modern Indian woman? Was he impressed by them? Well, he, I think he really wanted to uh, meet a few people who would uh, represent Indian creativity in a range of areas from literature to fashion to cinema. So that was uh, the, the topic and I think he has uh, returned home uh, with a lot of new ideas on how to develop uh, links in those areas. Really? So once again, the conversations he had with these ladies actually gave him ideas about things yes. to do? Well, you know, when you are a leader of a country, visiting another country, uh, the key thing is what kind of new idea can I, br can I bring back? Something that caught the imagination of the Indian people was when we saw him on Sunday on a metro going to Gurgaon. Now, I take it President Hollande doesn't get to travel by metro in Paris very often, Not anymore. All. Not anymore. What did he make of the journey to Gurgaon? Well, that was again uh, an Indian idea, and uh, with the, the idea was, uh, since we're going to inaugurate the Solar Alliance, which is a climate-friendly uh, uh, event uh, as a follow-up of the COP21 conference, uh, it, was, it would, was making sense to use a, a way of transport uh, which would not be polluting, and Metro is definitely one, and this one is was getting, getting from right the center of Delhi to Gogao, and that was the right And it gave do. him a chance to see a little bit of the countryside as well. Yes, indeed. Before I come to the serious stuff, let me ask you this. Now that the visit's over, would you characterize it as a success? I would characterize it as uh, exceptional, um, trust-based and purpose-driven. And has the relationship between the two countries reached a new high? I think yes, in the sense that when Prime Minister came to France last year, we uh, set a few goals uh, for the relationship for the years to come. And on this occasion, we, we have already materialized a number of them. I could give you a long list. Uh, and we have now a very clear vision on the priorities that we have to tackle uh, as of now. That is, 
uh, the part strategic partnership, in particular in the field of counterterrorism, and of course uh, all, all what is pertaining to climate change, which includes a number of areas of cooperation from energy to um, um, urban development and uh, other areas. Let's come to some of the deals and to some of the understandings that was reached between the two governments. And let's begin with Rafal, because many people thought it was perhaps the most important single issue. Are you disappointed that even after nine months, the two countries can't agree on the price at which France will sell 36 planes to India? You may be surprised, but there is a good news here. It is that finally people have also focused on other areas. Had we inked the, 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 the deal that day, everybody would have uh, forgotten that we have worked on climate change, that we have worked on energy, on culture, archaeology, and uh, uh, as many uh, other areas. But Yes, indeed, uh, the agreement is there. The work has been pursued since uh, April and uh, we are almost there uh, and all the parameters are now set. But are you disappointed you don't have an agreement on price? Well, this is going to come and in any case, I think neither Indians nor the French would like to uh, work on these issues under pressure of time. So it will be set at some point and it's coming soon. I understand your point that neither side wants to work under pressure of time, but the peculiar situation is that in the absence of an agreed price, mm -hmm. what you have is an understanding to sell planes without any agreement on what price you'll sell them. And people say either this is a bizarre understanding or the understanding is not set in stone and it can change. No, uh, it is an, a very clear-cut understanding and more than understanding, a commitment to do a series of things which trigger some elements of price. So now that we have this sound basis, it is agreed, it is signed, we can work on the price uh, quietly and we know where we are going. Papers like the Hindu have said that the Indians actually want a 20% reduction in the price that France, that France believes is the correct one. Can you confirm that? I no comment on that. But is there a small difference between the two sides on price or is it a sizable and big gap? Many I people fear it's a pretty big one. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Let me put it like this. At the Hyderabad House press conference, President Hollande said that the financial issues will be sorted out in a couple of days. Those were, I believe, his exact words. A few hours later, the sort, the company that makes Rafale issued a statement suggesting that it could take four weeks. And when you talk to Indian sources, they won't even put a timeline on it. Do you have a lot of hard bargaining between the two countries before a price is agreed? I think some, somewhere between four days and four weeks is a reasonable timeline. Four months would be a long time and uh, I think everybody is ready to work and uh, that will happen. You're saying something interesting between four days and four weeks, but you've also said four months will be too long. In other words, you expect it to happen within four weeks or six weeks. No, not between four, four weeks or six weeks. I, I just say the president said we start and we try to do it in four days. And uh, uh, if it takes four weeks, that would be also a reasonable time frame. My other question is, do you have a lot of hard bargaining? Will this be a difficult issue to sort out between the Indians? Of course, price negotiations are always complex, but uh, I think I'm hopeful because we have a very strong understanding that this deal is not only a deal, it's not a contract, it's a government-to-government -government agreement, uh, it's a govern French government which is negotiating, not the company, and it's a strategic asset we are going to share for decades, uh, 40 years, maybe more. So it's not a matter of days or weeks, uh, it's a commitment of both sides uh, to work together uh, in a strategic framework for decades. Except that when it was the question of the MMCRA mm -hmm. and 126, mm -hmm. that went on for five years and more and the two countries couldn't sort out the price. Now that it's down to 36, the same problem seems to be happening. So many people fear, is price going to turn out to be a stumbling block, even though both sides want to go ahead? Uh, it may be a little stone in, in, in your shoes during a few days and weeks, yes. But Just that. At, at the end, I think the commitment is there on both sides. The desire is here and that will happen. So this won't be a stumbling block? No, no. Have the two sides got an agreement on the offsets? The papers are suggesting that you've agreed to a 50% offset clause. Is that correct? I told you everything is now in the papers. We have agreed on uh, the day of the visit. Uh, everybody is uh, making comments on this, but we have free, frozen all the details of the negotiation. So the offset is agreed Everything to and frozen? Is there. Everything is there. Is it 50%? I don't know. That again can't be revealed. No. 
when the deal is finalized, mm -hmm. and I take your word it will be finalized and it won't stumble and fall, when the deal is finalized, would it be limited to just 36 planes or could it expand to cover several more? Well, what we are talking about today is 36. Then uh, the uh, operational requirement of the Air Force was and remains 126. Uh, so I leave you to take the, uh, leave, take the So there is a possibility that it could go beyond 36? Uh, there is a requirement of the Indian Air Force for 126 planes of this category. If it were to expand beyond the 36, would it be simply government to government and ready-made planes being sold or could there be a Make in India component? Yes, definitely there will be a Make in India component because we are committed to Make in India in defence altogether. And so this is going to happen in a number of defence areas. That could also, of course, include aeronautics, engines, electronics. All this is going to happen. And it could include the Rafale if the Rafale goes beyond the original 36? Why not? That's very interesting. So there could be a point in time when the Rafale is being made in India. Well, what we have committed to is to encourage making India in defence, which includes, as I said, a number of areas which are very close to the Rafale manufacturing. Now, I'm talking a little bit more about defence. The joint statement that was issued by the two governments on defence says, and I'm quoting, India and France encouraged their respective business enterprises to enter into arrangements for co-development and co-production mm -hmm. of defence equipment in India. Here you are. Are you hopeful that beyond the Mahindra Airbus agreement to make helicopters, there will be several other French companies making in India a whole range of defence equipment? Yes, indeed. In aeronautics, in Navy uh, equipments, uh, in, uh, maybe in the future in artillery, who knows? And these are things that we could start seeing happening within the next year or oh, two? Yes. Oh yes, very quickly. As soon as that, a year or two? Well, it takes, a, a, of course, a little bit of time to build the, the facilities and so on, but the deals will, be certain, will certainly happen in a matter of two years, yes. Now, one of the things that I noticed... You know, when the Prime Minister was in Paris, he came and he met uh, the entire defence uh, uh, companies of, of France uh, in a long meeting. I was there, and uh, he was very convincing in explaining how this would be a great chance for the French industry, and I think people were convinced. One of the things I noticed the Prime Minister went out of his way to say when he was in Chandigarh and speaking to French businessmen was to assure them, in very categoric terms, mm. that retrospective taxation was a closed chapter. Mm -hmm. How much of a concern was that for French business? Well, everything which is related to fiscal instability is a concern. And uh, indeed, this is a very important message. And uh, we are going to take this into account uh, in our uh, dialogue with the French companies. That's one element on which we had concerns and which uh, we believe now is resolved. It is resolved? But as far as we are concerned. It was promised to us, so we are going to, uh, of course, live with this commitment. So the French businessmen who are hearing Mr. Modi in Chandigarh are reassured that retrospective taxation is a closed chapter. It's no longer a fear or a concern for them. Well, we take the Prime Minister to his word and we are confident that his word are serious. A second area where there was a big deal or agreement between the two countries was on the decision to expand the number of nuclear reactors mm -hmm. to be built by Areva and Jetapur from two to six. And the joint statement added that you would start implementation of the project by early 2017. Right. Now that's roughly just a year away. Is this a firm commitment or just an indication of intent? Because I notice the joint statement calls it a shared aim. Yes, absolutely. We were previously working on two with the possibility of adding more in the future. So after some discussion, uh, some changes occurred. First change was that EDF, the French Electricity Consortium, which is the largest in the world, by the way, has taken over or will take over Arriva uh, for the future. So there was a substitution of partner, in, if we can say so. How but important a change was that? Is it just a new name, a new company, or did it require renegotiation? No, it, yes, it, require, it, it, it triggers a certain number of renegotiations in terms of MOUs and negotiation organization and so on. And, and of course, EDF is going to bring its expertise in uh, nuclear power plants management and engineering. So that, that makes a change. Uh, apart from that, the other element of change is the fact that India 
while coping with the climate change challenges in the future, will need a, a whole range of uh, um, clean energies, and definitely nuclear is part of it. And uh, there is a need of uh, very large production of uh, clean energy, and uh, this project for JTAP is 10,000 megawatts. But what made you increase it from 2 to 6? That's a 300% increase. Yeah, that's 10,000 megawatts of clean energy. And did this happen because the Indians asked or because the French were keen to boost it up quickly? No, I think s simply there is a requirement uh, for India to build quickly uh, a large number of nuclear reactors and a large uh, solar energy production capacity, a large wind energy production capacity, and this is part of the overall agenda. When you look at the commitments taken by India in terms of reduction uh, of, of the, the share of uh, um, uh, carbon emission emitting energies, there is a need to move forward and to move quickly. So, uh, of course, if we know that there will be six reactors at the same time, we can launch the construction and go much faster. What about the fact that the joint statement says that implementation of the project will start by early 2017? Yes. That means that we will conclude the negotiations by the end of 2016 and that immediately thereafter and even maybe even before uh, we could start the uh, early works and, and move forward. So you have a deadline for concluding these negotiations? Yes. That yeah. deadline is 11 months from now, at the latest? Yes, Rob, yes something like that. Yes. Can it be achieved? Yes, I, I'm sure. You have no the, doubt? No, I have no doubt because, uh, again, we have a very clear understanding on what type of reactor it is, what a kind of electricity it can produce, and where it will be built, that is in Jaitapur, Maharashtra. So all these tex uh, technical elements are done. So we, we have to move on the price and on a few parameters which remain there to be Absolutely. One critical factor, just like the Rafal deal, is the price here. Has a price been agreed between the two governments and not revealed, or is the price still to be negotiated? No, the price is not uh, agreed yet. We are going to factor all the different elements now that we know that it is a six and not two. That's a different uh, approach of the project, and uh, I'm sure we will find a solution. But can you agree on a price in 11 months? Because after all, yes. Rafale has been going on for six, seven years, and you haven't agreed on a price there. H have we started even? You have started? No. I said, have we started to negotiate the price even? So can you then agree on a price in 11 months? Yes, of course, if we can agree on the Rafale in four weeks, why couldn't we agree on the nuclear power plants in 11 months? People will say that if you don't end up agreeing on Rafale in four weeks, then there's doubt here as well, isn't there? You know, you are paid to have doubts, I have I paid to have uh, determination. A second element of, I suppose, problem possibly, is does France have any problems with India's nuclear liability law, like Westinghouse, for example? Mm -hmm. Do those problems linger or are they resolved? Well, the Department of Ener Atomic Energy recently uh, published information that they are going to join, India is going to join uh, one of the uh, conventions on nuclear liability. So that's a very good news and in the statement we felicitate India for that. And uh, indeed we are going to work under the, uh, this particular But on convention. the liability issue, does the nuclear insurance pool that India is setting up satisfy your concerns or do you have more concerns that still need to be addressed? No, that's an element of the solution indeed. But there is more elements that are needed that have to fall into place. No, now that India is going to join this particular convention, that will certainly uh, pave the way to a solution. So nuclear liability is not a big problem. No. And it, is, it has never been, as I said. One of the interesting things in the joint statement, and I'm quoting the joint statement, it says there will be economical financing from the French side. Mm -hmm. really? What level of, what magnitude of financing is this likely to be? Well, of course, the um, financial mechanism to, uh, is, will depend on the total amount of the contract. Yeah, but we will set up uh, what is appropriate to ensure that the cost of financing is as low as, low as possible. So this will be a long period, low interest rate loan extended by the French government? Oh, this is, of course, to be negotiated by uh, EDF and NPCIL, but I think there, there will be a very reasonable uh, interest rate. So it's quite possible that of these 10,000 uh, megawatts, we're talking of loan that would cover perhaps 50-60%. No, this is for the companies to negotiate, I don't know. A third big deal that was reached between the two sides when President Hollande was here was to do with the railways. Mm -hmm. SNCF, the French National Railways, will help modernize Ambala and Hudhiana stations. Mm -hmm. They will upgrade the Delhi Chandigarh link mm -hmm. to a semi-high speed link. Mm -hmm. And Alstom will build 800 
high horsepower locomotives in Madhepura in Bihar. Mm -hmm. Does this altogether mean that France and French companies plan to play a substantive role in Suresh Prabhu's modernization and infrastructure development plans for the Indian Railways? That's absolutely uh, correct. Uh, this railway uh, development is key for, the, for India, for the future, and for milli millions and if not hundreds of millions of people who are taking the train every day. So we are definitely committed to uh, uh, partner with India to upgrade the railways and, and make it the best uh, we can. Uh, that includes uh, the tracks and the organization, signaling and all this, and of course uh, the coaches and the locomotives. We do exactly the same in the field of metro. So this will be for us a very, very important development for the future. And once again, will there be an element of French funding that will come in by way of low-cost loans? Well, the contract for, for the locomotive is already there, so it is signed and everything is agreed. As far as the um, uh, daily Chandigarh connection, this is still at the uh, level of a study. So we will see when, when this happens. But there could be some French finance there when it goes further. We'll see in due course. What I'm intrigued by is why is the Delhi Chandigarh line only to be upgraded to a semi high speed up to 200 kilometers per hour rather than a full high speed? Because it's too short. It's ah. only 200 and a few kilometers. So uh, in such a short distance, you, uh, it's, it's not worth doing an ultra speed uh, uh, system. Uh, but when Chandiga will be at one hour uh, from Delhi, uh, that will be like a... Beyond the Delhi Chandiga, is France interested in developing high speed train connections in India, like the Japanese are about to start? Right. We, we have made some proposal, and, uh, but the Japanese proposal was apparently better than ours, in particular in financial terms. Uh, but of course our technology is there, and uh, if India is interested, we can certainly use it in, on another corridor. While we're on the subject of Chandigarh, I gather, and this is not known publicly or widely, that a joint team of French and Indian archaeologists working in the Chandigarh area have made a very exciting and interesting discovery. Tell me for the first time on television about it. Yes, uh, the two leaders uh, looked at the discoveries themselves. Uh, this is traces of human activity in nearby Chandigarh, which are dated back to 2.6 million years ago, which makes uh, these people uh, among the oldest in the world. And the important thing is that at that, at that time they were using tools and probably they were already uh, smart people using uh, smart tools of their time, which makes the Punjabi uh, people like you, uh, Karan Tapar, uh, among the smartest people in the world. But this also means that you can actually trace back Indian people 2.6 million yes. years ago. Exactly. exactly. Which makes this one of the oldest yes. findings ever. Yes. Exactly. In India and in Asia, it's comparable to the Peking man, which is also, who is also 2.6 million years old. So this will change the way people view things? I think so. And this is why the two leaders were enthusiastic about the discovery and went to see the exhibition themselves. Welcome back. You're watching To The Point and an exclusive interview with France's ambassador to India, Francois Richier, on the French president's visit, which ended just 24 hours ago. Let's come to the political side of the visit. One of the most important understandings was on the subject of terror. Here, for the first time ever, the two countries have signed a specific joint statement on counter-terrorism. Mm -hmm. For the audience, how would you sum up what that joint statement achieves and why is it important? Well, for long we have been talking uh, between India and France about terrorism. Uh, in a very short time span, both of our countries were attacked by different organizations, but with very similar methods at the end. So that creates a certain kind of connection between France and India and a very good understanding between the two leadership that this is a priority for us. So I think it, we, I think it was really the good moment to highlight in the face of everybody, our partners in the fight against terrorism, but also our enemies, that uh, yes, we are uh, hand in hand and we're going to fight together. Now, one of the things is that the two countries have called for decisive action. I think mm -hmm. that's the exact language mm -hmm. the joint statement mm -hmm. uses against LET, against Jesh, Hezbul Mujahideen and the Haqqani network. You've also asked Pakistan to bring the perpetrators of Gurdaspur, Pathan Court and the Mumbai attack of 2008 to justice and to ensure that such attacks don't happen again. Does France plan to take steps on its own to implement this? Will you, for instance, take up this matter directly with the Pakistani government? Well, we have already done that. But I think action means a very large uh, range of possibilities. 
accord in accordance with the type of threat and the type of organization we are talking about. For example, as far as the Sahel and Africa region is concerned, we have deployed a military operation and this operation is still there, protecting the countries of that area from Al-Qaeda. Uh, in the case of uh, the organizations which are based in Pakistan, of course it's primarily uh, an Indian-Pakistan uh, issue. Uh, but I think w what we have to find out is uh, uh, the entire range of possibilities and identify the ones which are uh, uh, appropriate for each case. The problem is India has done everything it can to try and persuade either the Pakistani civilian government or through them the Pakistan army and the ISI to bring the perpetrators of various acts of terror to justice. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem to succeed. Mm -hmm. You know because your French ambassador had the frustration Indian politicians feel. Mm -hmm. You know about the enormous anger it creates in the media and in public society. Can France in any way step in to try and persuade the Pakistanis? You have a good bilateral relationship with them. Can you use that to say to them, listen, you have to sort this out? Well, I think we already passed a message to the, to the Pakistanis as well as the Americans, even publicly most recently. Um, I don't know if this has an effect, uh, but at the end of the day, it's primarily an Indo-Pakistan issue. Well, if the India believes that we can do something, we will certainly be ready to, uh, to partner with India in this uh, endeavor. So if India asks for certain special steps to of be course. taken, of you will take them? Of course as well as we recognize that uh, India's policy in, the, in South Asia is a stabilizing and positive one. The so joint if we can partner in this as well, we are ready to do it. You're ready to do yes, it? Yes, of course. So if India asks for special steps, for special efforts to be made by President Hollande himself or by the government, you're happy to do it? Indeed. Including if he were to ring up and say, Monsieur Hollande, I need someone to speak to Nawaz, pick up the phone and persuade him to get on with it because this is also holding up my dialogue with them, he will be happy to step in. Well, let's see if it happens. The joint statement on terror also talks about stepping up bilateral cooperation, and I'm quoting now, on terror, under the supervision of the annual strategic dialogues mm -hmm. and joint working group on counter-terrorism meetings. Mm -hmm. Is that just more talk and discussion, or do you have specific steps in mind? Well, yes, it did, and one is mentioned in this communique. The, the two groups are of different nature. The strategic dialogue is, of course, encompassing defense, uh, nuclear, space, and other areas, whereas the counterterrorism group is focused. Uh, but at both levels, uh, we discuss counterterrorism, in both in terms of exchange of information, exchange of uh, best practices, and, uh, now, and training. Uh, the la latest development we have identified is joint training and joint exercises between uh, the NSG in India and the GIGN in France, which are uh, our strong uh, counterterrorism squads. And that's uh, an important development, I think. We have already shared with, it, uh, with the NSG uh, the lessons we learned from uh, the previous attacks in, in France. So Including that the one in November? Uh, primarily the one in, in, uh, in January and the one in November is on the way. But the interesting thing is that NSG now will be trained specifically by French counter-terror forces. No, no, they're not going to be trained. They are going to train together, exchange their best practices and now develop joint exercise together. Both here and in France? Yes, indeed. And how soon will this start? This year. This year? Yes, yes, in a matter of months. Uh, of course, at present, the uh, uh, GIGN in France is very busy uh, because of the state of emergency and the situation. We are all together, but as soon as we can, uh, we will do it. Similarly, we had this uh, joint exercise between the French army and the Indian army in January. It was a counter-terrorism um, uh, exercise, of course, made by uh, armies, but they are also engaged in counter-terror activities. And despite all uh, the, uh, what we have to do in France, uh, this this exercise was uh, maintained uh, when many, many others were cancelled. So we, we kept that one. So across the board, the cooperation, collaboration and the joint training and joint exercising on the issue of terror will increase between the two countries. Yes, parties. and it's due to increase even more in the future. Now there's an intriguing part of the joint statement which says, and I'm quoting once again, India and France underscored their determination to achieve the accession of India to the NSG in 2016. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by the language underscored their determination. What does that mean? It sounds to me, a journalist, a bit like gobbledygook. 
No, no, uh, there is a precise uh, sequence uh, which we hope will be successful this year and we have been pursuing the accession of India to NSG for many many years. I remember myself in the past uh, in previous jobs uh, pushing for that and we are hopeful and we are going to partner very clearly and very strongly to ensure that it happens this year. But underscore that determination simply means you try harder. No, it underscore word determination that means we are definitely decided to push for that on the international agenda. Well, that's the second part of this. It says that you hope to achieve the accession of India to the NSG in 2016. Yes. That gives you yes. 11 months and 4 days. If you want to say that, yes. But can you really do it in that time? We will do whatever we can to achieve that. What's the likelihood of success? Most people will say the likelihood must be close to zero. Well, you know... Having a grand ambition doesn't take much more time than having a small ambition at the end of the day. You're putting it very charmingly. This is therefore just ambition. No, an ambition is a, is a clear-cut project. I told you the visit is trust-based and purpose-driven. This is what we are doing now. France has also signed three MOUs for the development of Chandigarh, Nagpur and Pondicherry into smart cities. Mm -hmm. And your French development agency will be providing technical assistance. What sort of technical assistance do you have in mind? Well, it's, it will be custom made for each city because, of course, each of these three cities, Nagpur, Pondicherry and, and Chandigarh, have different requirements, different state of development. And, um, and so we will adjust ourselves to what the people of these cities want. We are not prescribing anything. But uh, the three cities have made plans, we are looking into these plans, uh, they have identified special specific sectors and will provide the, uh, well, the necessary technical assistance if required and, uh, and of course also some funding we committed to provide. Funding as well, that's yes, very yes. important. We committed in April when the Prime Minister was there, we committed 2 billion euros of soft loans for uh, these, smart, these three smart cities. Now bilateral trade between the two countries despite the strategic closeness despite the political closeness unfortunately doesn't seem to cross the 10 billion dollar level mm -hmm. what steps do you have to take it to the levels of 13 40 billion dollar because that's certainly an area where France must feel there can be a lot that can be done mm -hmm. and needs to be done quickly I see you are not very interested in climate change oh, I'll come to climate change in a moment, I but hope so. tell me about investment. I hope so because again it was two key issues climate change and terror but uh, I hope we can speak about absolutely climate change but come, well. come to me well the, my, my answer on the trade issue is very simple France French companies in India have t grossly 20 billion euros investments and 1,000 installations across the country. Um, probably their out yearly output is between 20 and 30 billion euros a year. We export 3 billion uh, goods to India, which means that we make in India uh, 10 times what we export. So we cannot say that our trade is low. Our uh, exchanging in a way what is done by French companies is again 10 times what we export but at the end of the day there are French companies French technology French design uh, basically it's uh, making India made by the French so will we reach 30 40 billion dollar level soon or is that unlikely it's already there only in that big grander sense yeah, the actual, the actual yeah. trade is just 10 billion. Uh, ten, yes 10 billion but again we produce in India French companies produce in and India. that will take it up no it's, it's just that if you count only what is crossing the border, that's one element. But it is not what, it, what represents the, the, the size of the contribution of the French companies to India's development. What they produce in India uh, is uh, 10 times what we export. So altogether, uh, it's not a commercial exchange in the, in the way you uh, express it, but it is the reality of the connection which exists between France and India. And again, we make in India. Let's come to climate change. It's a subject I know that you're very keen to talk about. The two heads of government together inaugurated the Secretariat in Gurgaon. Mm -hmm. France has made available some 300 uh, million euros. But the president was honest enough to say that in fact perhaps a trillion is needed. Yes. Where will the rest of the funding come from? Well, for, we have to start. Uh, again, as you said, it's the first stone which is there. And uh, we need to uh, start the operation of the solar islands even before the Secretariat is built. So we are already talking with India, with other uh, countries of the alliance, of course, on what should be done as a matter of priority. And this is what we wanted uh, to announce, that yes, we are going to activate the mechanism. We bring 300 million euros to start. Of course, it will, it's a long journey that we, are, that we have embarked in. It will 
will take many years before we can provide electricity to each and every people who is in the dark uh, across uh, uh, the, the world. Uh, but we want to kickstart very quickly, and this is the purpose of this 300 million euros. And climate change and the understanding between the two governments, and perhaps the understanding in particular between the two heads of government themselves, yes. is an important aspect of this relationship between India and France. And I would say both between India and France and between the President and the Prime Minister. Uh, they see, drive it personally? I think so. You know, it's Prime Minister Modi who had this idea of the Solar Islands and the pre President was immediately convinced that it was the right thing to do and they decided to partner and to make it happen. This is wh why they inaugurated the ID in Paris uh, during the COP21, one we launched the Secretariat today, yesterday, and why we want the operation to start very quickly. This is an ideal moment to ask you, what is the nature of the personal relationship between François Hollande and Narendra Modi? Before I come to that, uh, just to uh, complement what I just said, uh, solar islands is one thing, uh, but the commitment to the climate change is also an element of Indo-French uh, collaboration in India. So we are going to do the nuclear power plant, as I said, but a number of investments are on the way in the field of wind energy, in the field of solar energy. Two French companies uh, were the lowest bidders in, in, in the last auctions. So we are going to do a lot of things together, including energy storage for rural areas in the future. Tell me now about the relationship, because as you said, climate change is driven by the relationship between the two men. Tell me more broadly about the relationship they've established. You see, they have met five times uh, since the Prime Minister is Prime Minister. And uh, that has, of course, helped them understanding each other, even if, of course, they have very different backgrounds, very different experiences. Uh, I think at least there is something they have in common, is that none of them was minister uh, in their uh, political career, and they were freshmen when they became uh, uh, president and prime minister. Apart from that, I think the chemistry is very good, and I can see that in an, uh, could see that in numerous occasions. And the way you can see them in the metro or uh, in Chandigarh is very uh, iconic of this. And uh, that is not. I would say a prerequisite uh, for the development of, uh, of the relation, but that helps indeed. Would you call them friends? Do they like each other? I don't, they have not used that term themselves, uh, but I think they have talked about friendship, which is already something very important. And what language do they speak to each other in? Because both of them are not totally fluent in English, well they speak English a lot better than most people realize. Mm -hmm. But what language do they speak to each other in? Do they speak English or do they use translators? Oh, they, they use translator, but when there is no translator or if it is too complex, uh, they speak in English. And uh, again, even if the English is not perfect as far as the French president is concerned, um, the chemistry comes in support of that and I think they can understand each other very, very easily. Ambassador Richie, a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much. Pathankot Highway. Police uh, and bomb squad have reached the spot and at the moment investigating the matter. Let me go across to Manjit Negi now for more details. Manjit, what more information are you picking up?